So I'm going to be a Bible believing church. Amen. Bible believing fellowship. We're grateful uh, to be in the house of the Lord. And members of the body of Christ, we just expect to see you. Amen. God's done so much for us and that we are duty bound to give him the praise, honor, and glory in which he is so due. Wake you up this morning. Start as you're on your way. He's giving you the activity, your limbs, your ability to be able to put one foot in front of another as you slumber, slumber, and slept. He looked at you and he said, one more day. Somebody, I, I've heard if you've got a pulse, that means God still has a purpose for your life. Amen. You could have came in here depressed. That's the thing about the house of the Lord. You can come in here sad and leave out of here glad. It's something about singing. It's like lubrication to the soul. And then you hear a word that just speaks to you. It's, it's like, man, well, he's looking at my situation. No, I ain't got too busy. I ain't got time for all of that. The word knows how to find you right where you are. That's the power of God's word. It's not, the Bible says it's quick and it's power. That word quick means it's a living word. This is not a dead letter. It is a living word. Aren't you glad about that? Yes. That there's still some relevancy in the word of God. I was requested this morning to sing uh, Lily in the Valley. <clears throat> down south, we do that all the time. And I, I don't know, we sang this maybe a couple times here. Once you just roll with me, uh, I'm, I'm trying to do this to help. Uh, somebody yelling, man, you got to sing, man. I, man, after he did it, they strip my throat out and they got to kiss the y'all. Try to keep doing your promises. Uh, Oh, there's a lily of home in the valley of home that is bright as the morning star. You know there's a lily in the valley that is bright as the morning star. You know there's a lily oh, in the valley that is bright as the morning star. Acts chapter 
took the gate at verse number 42, <clears throat> ready or not, here we go. Start verse 41. The Bible says, And those that gladly received his word were baptized. And that same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Is that in your Bible? Yes. Notice what the Bible says in verse number 42. And they continued steadfastly or diligently in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. They sold their possessions and their goods and they divided them among all so no one had a need. So they continued daily in one accord in the temple and breaking the bread from house to house. They did eat their meat with gladness and simplicity of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. That is about yes. school in Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. The Bible says, Now as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captains of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jerusalem the resurrection from the dead. And they laid their hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word, they believed, and the number of men came to be about 5,000. Is that in your Bible? Yeah, yeah, the Bible says in verse number 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uh, uneducated or unlearned or untrained men, they marveled and realized that they had been with Jesus. Y'all see that? Drop down to verse number 18. The Bible says, so they called them and commanded them that they should not speak or teach in the name of of Jesus. Verse number 19, but Peter and John answered and said, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge that for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. The Bible said they further threatened them and they let them go, finding no way to punish them because the other people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. Y'all see that in your Bible? The Bible says in verse number 23, being let go, they went their own their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said. And when they heard that, they raised their voices unto God and they began to pray. If you drop down to verse number 29, Bible says, Now, Lord, look on their threats. Grant to your servants that with all boldness that we may speak your word by stretching out your hand and heal with signs and wonders that can be done through the name of your servant, holy servant, Jesus Christ. And when they had prayed, the place where the assembly was shaken, I guess God heard them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God, notice this, underline, with boldness. The Bible said after that place was shaken, after they were filled with the Spirit of God, with all boldness, they continued to be about the work of God. Notice what the Bible begins to say in verse number 32. Now the multitude of those who believed, they were of one heart. They were united. Y'all see this church? It's important for us to be united. They were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. They were on the same page. Amen, somebody. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and with great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them who lacked what they needed. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. I'm going to stop here before you get tired. No, I just got tired myself. Uh, but there's so much we got to get to chapter 6. We're going to get to chapter 6, believe it or not. I want to speak to you this morning from the subject. This is part two from uh, uh, last week. And I just add some stuff to it this week. You know how I do. Uh, I want to speak to you from the subject. Church, it's time to grow together as a family. It's time to grow together as a family. Uh, and three points we dealt with last week. Number one, God has designed the church to grow upward together. God has designed the church to grow upward together. 
Number two, God has designed the church to grow inward together. God has designed the church to grow inward together. Well, I don't, I don't like her, and I don't, I don't like him. That's what God said. Get over it. No, you don't get over yourself. It, it, it's about it's about his will. It's about his desire. It's about what he wants. Y'all all right? That's verses 44 to 46. And then lastly, lastly today, God has designed the church to grow outward together. He's commissioned us, he's called us to be able to go out and be witnesses for him. Y'all on the line today? All right, one, two, three, one more time. God has designed the church to grow upward together. Number two, God has designed the church to grow inward together. And then lastly, God has designed the church to grow outward together. And the whole dynamic is together. That's, that's the key phrase. That's the key tagline. And we ought to be coming together as a family. The church is the family of God. Amen. Just like you have your own personal, physical family. Y'all heard me say on last week, there's some folk in your family that you claim, and there's some folk in your family that you... Oh, I heard y'all was trying to say, who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Huh, you start playing off. That, that was some folk that you would choose, and that was some folk you like. Mm. But, but, but see, when it comes to the family of God, you don't get to choose your brothers and sisters. Amen. 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 I'm so glad that God didn't put it in your hands, because that might have been some folk like me that you weren't the Amen. 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 What you laughing for, brother? Yeah, that was some folk, but, but it's all in God's hand. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he placed everybody in the body as it pleased him. Amen. Amen. God's the boss. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And like my uncle said, you got the sauce. Amen. Amen. God is the boss. When we go back to this book of, of, of Acts, the beginning, the actions of the apostles. This is the beginning of the church. The church is birthed on the day of Pentecost. In Acts chapter 2, when the apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to speak. When you had the United Nations come together, those from Mede and, and Pamphylia and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, and Pantheon, all, all of those Jews from every nation were gathered together. But when the apostles spoke, every man heard them in their own language speak the wonderful works of God that confounded everybody. I said, man, what in the world is going on? Did you hear that? Did you understand that? How is this thing even possible? And in verse number 14, Peter begins to preach the gospel message. He said, you all, you Jews with wicked hands, you crucified and slain the Christ. Jesus was who he said he was. All those miracles y'all tried to discount, you couldn't. He was the son of God. God had made that same Jesus both Lord and Christ. And the Bible says in verse 37, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter, if what you said is right, how do I make it right? That ought to be the question even on the floor. For somebody even on today that don't have that intimate relationship the way that they need to have, Lord, what do I need to do to make things right? Peter said in verse number 38, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the authority of Jesus Christ, for, for, for the forgiveness of your sin. He said, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Has anybody in here sinned before? Yeah. Amen. Raise your hand. Yeah, Some of y'all need to raise your hand. Raise everything you got. You, you, you know you have sin. I know the Bible says Romans 3, 23, all have sin. Some of y'all read, y'all have sin. No, no. All, everybody. Amen. All the leadership in the church, except for who? All of them have sin. They perked up. Somebody who's sick just woke up. No, everybody. Huh? Not a die in everybody. Everybody. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. God has set a standard that many times we don't measure up to. You ought to be thankful for what Jesus did on Calvary's cross. He was hung up. For I hang up. He who knew no sin became sin for you and for me. I know you said Jesus. We say all the time, Jesus paid it all. I used to play with some of my friends when it came time for the bill to come. I said, don't worry about it. Jesus paid it all. He said, boy, you better go in your pocket and put something out. That's a way reality. But you said, well, I knew Jesus paid it all. Well, well, how did he pay it? Let me tell you something. His receipt was the nail prints in his hand. Ain't that somebody? Part of his receipt was the nails in his feet. And the part of his receipt was the crown of thorns that was laid on his head. Look, the, the, the part of his receipt was his splinted, laid in back as a 
result of the lashes and being on that old rugged cross. And I stopped by to tell you, it wasn't the nails that kept him up there. It was for his love for you and for me. And I don't know about you, but that ought to move you. Somebody did something for me. And guess what? You didn't deserve it. Amen, somebody. When you think about when you think about what you're gonna do for somebody else, one of the first things come to your mind: Do they deserve it or not? Huh? See, God blesses us just like He bless your children. Sometimes my mom said, "I'm up here acting up in the store, and she's like, boy, I shouldn't even get it for you." Okay, mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. God blesses us that way all the time. Amen, somebody. He didn't have the roof over your head. He keep you driving. He didn't have your relationship together when it should have been broken. Amen, so I, God has done something that blessed us in spite of us. Yes. Amen, so I, we got all this wisdom. We got all this knowledge. And we haven't even been using it for the kingdom of God. But he's blessed you anyway. Amen. He's blessed us in spite of our selfishness. Amen. Hmm. But in order for a family, in order for a church to be unified, we've got to come together. Yes. It's, it's got to be Jesus over my own, look, look, the personal agenda. Uh -huh. Amen, somebody. Because he's the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Ephesians chapter 1, 22, and verse number 23. Colossians 1, verse number 18. Same dynamic. He's head over all things to the church, which is his body. And he's the head. He sets the directive for the organization, which is the church, the body of Jesus Christ, on how we are to operate. He gave the marching orders to his apostles and said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that believes not will be condemned. Mark 16, 15 and 16, Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20. We've got the mandate. But then in the book of Acts, we see them applying that which Jesus commanded. And he said, listen, I'm going away. In Acts chapter 1, we see Jesus go off on a cloud. And then now it's up to them to carry out the mandate of Jesus Christ. Let me remind you of something. The apostles are gone. And guess who's left? Look to the left. Look to the right. Look to the front. Look to the back. We are left to still carry out that same mandate in which Christ gave to them. Yeah. There are some things that we can look at. There are some things uh, that we can begin to peruse. The Bible says that after uh, they heard that message, and he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in verse number 41 that we began to read, the Bible says, and those that gladly received his word were baptized. And that same day that were added unto them about 3,000 people. And don't let me hear you. Let me remind you. Let me remind you. There's some folk who need to be baptized today. The water's ready. It's right behind here. And look, we got the clothes for you. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you the opportunity to come. See, see, as you get your mind ready to be able to look, obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, see, baptism is not the end. It's the beginning. Amen. Notice what the Bible says in verse 42. And then they continue. After they were baptized, they continued diligently, not half-heartedly. Not nonchalantly. They continue diligently in the apostles' doc, in the teaching, and the fellowship, and the breaking of bread, and in prayer. And I stop by to tell you, fellowship is not two fellows in the shit. All right. Comes from the Greek word koinonia, which means joint sharing. It's an activity you all are involved in together for the furtherance of the cause of another. A amen, somebody. What, what are you fellowship in? I know we call when we get in the back and eat chicken and everything. And that, that ain't just fellowship. That ain't biblical fellowship. Amen. But the question is, what are you sharing in? What ministries are you helping to, to lighten the load of others? This is all about self examination here. Y'all on the line? Notice this, but, but listen, the church has to grow with an upward mentality, apostles, doctor, fellowship, breaking the bread, and in prayer. And the Bible says many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And the Bible says that they, look, as a result of their diligence, they ate in one another's houses. They, they assembled together daily. Y'all see that in the Bible? Yeah, yeah. I just have to see, they love being together, y'all. It wasn't as soon as the close of prayer that she knocked somebody over trying to get out of here. Oh, to get away from each other. Huh? These were coronavirus. They got coronavirus out there too. 
But, but see, guess what? You say, well, I, don't, I don't need nobody. Yes, you do. Man, sometimes uh, the pains and the struggles and the difficulties of life, you don't know how much you need other people. Bible says, Book of Ecclesiastes 2 is better than one. And one man falls and, and has difficulty getting up. He can't raise himself. But if there is another, he can aid him. Y'all know, right? Yes. Amen, somebody. So it's all about us living in a way, in accordance that will be beneficial to the kingdom and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Notice this. Look, there, there's something. Look, uh, God has designed the church to grow inward. And that's important. That's important as we begin to continue to peruse this thing, understanding this, to grow inward. Notice uh, in Acts chapter 2, uh, there was a reference to them, the fellowship that they actually had. But I want you to notice, let's go back to uh, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, let's fast forward. Gotta get these two points in today. Acts chapter 4, and beginning at verse number, uh, let's see. Now, it comes a point in our life as we experience the difficulties and the ups and downs and the different nuances that we have to learn to look, to, to, to live for Christ. And love, and, and to have consideration for other people outside of ourselves. Amen. 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 No, no, notice, notice. See, when when trouble had came to the church, because trouble will go hit the church. You know why? Because people in. Yeah. See, the devil don't don't mess with inanimate objects. He don't, he don't mess with forks and and. and, and uh, you know, uh, inanimate tractors and things like that. No, no, he messes with us. Yes, yes, yes. And as long as you got people in the organization, problems will pop up right. from time to time. Doesn't just mean the organization is well. The organization is well as long as there's people in. It. Amen, somebody. Amen. <laughs> Churches be all right if some people were in. But 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 the, where you have people. There will be, amen, somebody. And, and as we look over the body of Jesus Christ, look, the church is a growing organism, so you'll have some who are seasoned, and you're always going to have new folk in the body, and everybody's not going to be at the same level. Everybody's not going to think the same. But we all ought to come to agreement, look, on oh, who's going to govern our lives. But notice this, when trouble had befallen the apostles and they were threatened and they were when they were instructed that they were going to be beat, we're going to knock the uh, and we see you again. Don't you teach anymore in his name. You, no, no, that, that's what text says uh, in, in verse, number, uh, verse number 17. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. So they called them, commanded them not to speak anymore in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I know what it is that you want me to do, but there's no way that I can deny what I've seen and what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. He is the master of the sea. I, I've seen his, look, I, I've seen his healing power. I, I've seen his transforming dynamic. I, I, I've seen him open up a restaurant on the side of a mountainside and took a boy's uh, little bag lunch and fed five. That I saw that. There's no way that I can deny it. I, I remember when we were going into the city of Maine and there, uh, as we were coming in, there was a lady on her way out and, uh, and there was a funeral procession and Jesus looked at her on, with compassion and he touched the coffin and he told the young man to get up and he said, woman, it's going to be all right. There's some things I just can't deny. I, I, I was sad when we went uh, to, to, to Lazarus. We were going to pay our last respects and Mary and Arthur were frustrated and destroyed. Said, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. And I remember looking at the master and hearing him say, show me who you laid him. And I, I remember them trying to push back Jesus. It's no use going to see him now because it's about four days now and his body stinking. Show me where you laid him. And, and I remember that he said this, move away the stone. And, and then he said, Lazarus, come forth. And, and then Lazarus, the man that was dead, spirit went back into his body. And he made his way out to where everyone else was. And the Bible says, take those grave clothes off of him. Loose him and let him go. He's not a dead man. He's more than alive. And I stop by to tell you, even in the midst of difficult times, your situation might look like it's on its way to the graveyard, but we have a Savior that specializes in resurrection. 
Yeah, yeah. Your dead situation is God's opportunity. Sometimes you just want to give up and quit. Amen, somebody. Sometimes you say, you know what? These kids can have a house. I'm about to get. I ain't talking about me. I'm just talking about my cousin told me one time. See, your bonds 
in Christ ought to make a difference. I go to any or do different parts of the country and say, man, I'm a member of the body of Christ. And that's instant. Well, look out. For my brotherhood means something. Sisterhood means something. It all depends on who you know. That's true. It's, it all means the same thing even in Jesus Christ. The church looks out for its own. Y'all all right? We see the benevolent nature of the church giving and supporting others that had need by selling what they have and giving their resources. How, how sold out are you for the cause of Jesus Christ? The Lord was willing, look, calling us to serve in his kingdom. But let me tell you some awesome things I love about New Haven Church of Christ. See, we support one another spiritually, emotionally, financially, and look, uh, also with our presence. I've seen the saints who have lost loved ones. I've seen uh, members who've experienced, uh, they will stop by the house and spend time with that member. Let them know that they're cared for and being prayed for. When our church is hosting a funeral, I've seen members take, uh, take the actual day off so that they can serve in the kitchen and serve in the repast so that that member wouldn't have to worry about some days. That's the church looking out for the church. When members are having surgery, members are transporting them to, to do their surgery. During the surgery, they make sure they have a way home. We, we, we members have transported members to their chemo treatments because they needed a ride or they lack family support. That's the church looking out for the church. Our members have supported our youth at other sporting events and, and other things that they may have just to say a, a word of encouragement to let them know that they are supported and that their church family cares about them. We have saints that will spend time to help maintain our facilities by cutting the grass and planting flowers and cleaning the building so that we can have it comfortable up in here. Amen, somebody. We're, we're, look, we are serving church, and if you don't want to serve, you ain't going to last long here. If you want to see my thing, oh, it asked somebody to do something. <laughs> <laughs> well, all we got to do is look at the Bible. A reason he's always saying, so look, it's always harder for the devil to hit a moving target. <laughs> huh? Movement, activity. Let me tell you something. The church would have grown if all they did was stay where they were. Well. You remember in Acts chapter 1, they saw Jesus go back up on the cloud, two men in white on the side. They asked him, why do you stand here gazing into heaven? Just like you see him go, he's going to come back in like manner. He was, they were also prompted to them. Let me tell you something. God, stop standing around and get about the business. He's gone. Just like he promised, he said he's going away. But he told them, I won't leave you comfortless. I'm going to give you my spirit that will lead you and guide you into all truth. Let's get about the business. And then right after that, they select Matthias. And then after that, they received the Holy Spirit and they began to preach. City to city. Acts chapter 3, they healed the lame man. Then the number grew. Acts chapter 4, look, about 5,000 men. They began to preach the gospel and that persecution is picking up. And then when you go over to Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, we find them being in prison. All as a result, for teach being teachers of faithful uh, leaders of the gospel of Jesus Christ in verse number 17 of Acts chapter 5 the high priest rose up and all those people who were with them and the sect of the Sadducees they were filled with indignation they laid their hands on the apostles put them in the common prison but uh, but at night an uh, angel God always has a way to make a provision for his people he sent an angel to let them out and he said notice what the angel told them the angels didn't say uh, go ahead go back home go get some rest Put your feet up in the air condition. I know y'all worked hard already. Notice what the angel said. In Acts chapter 5 and verse number 20, go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of life. God sent an individual to let them out so that they can continue the business of kingdom building. Amen. Are you helping to build a kingdom? That's what God's calling us to do. No, 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 no. Notice what he says in verse number uh, He said, listen, let him out. Go stand in the temple. Verse number 21. And uh, look, when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and they talked. You remember they were already threatened that their lives can be taken. But they were about the business of God. You remember they got finished praying, Lord, look on their threats. And they saw when the angel came, Lord, looking out for us. We're going to do this thing. It's power in number because you can be struggling in your spirit, but when I see you show up, when I see you encouraged, when I see another brother encouraged, when I see another sister encouraged, when I see you singing when I don't want to sing, that encourages me to sing, even though I don't want to sing. And that, that gets my spirit into the right mode. Amen, somebody? A little leaven, leaven is a whole lot. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, amen. 
Notice, notice, notice. He says, but the high priest and those who came in, they, they kept the find that they were let out of prison. Now I want you to see, notice this in verse number 21. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple, the chief priest, heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. So one came and told them, saying, look, the men who you put in prison, they stand in the temple teaching the people. Wow. Then the captain went with the officers and bought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should be sold. And when they had bought them and set them before the high priest, notice the language now. The Bible says in verse number 28, did not we strictly command you, don't teach anymore in his name. And look, you have failed. New age Jerusalem with your doctrine, and you intend to break this man's blood upon us. Amen. See, notice, notice the prompting of the Spirit of God. Notice how this work, without mass media, without the internet, without flyers, without email, without all, guess what? He said, you have filled the whole city with this doctrine. Are y'all hearing this thing? Let me tell you something, they didn't have a bullhorn, they didn't have the advances of technology that we have, but they were purposeful about their movement. They were committed to the cause of Jesus Christ. And guess what? As a result, there was impact. Come on, preacher. Yes, Lord. But you got to look in that mirror. You say, man, how committed am I? Am I even sharing the word? You can say, well, well I, I don't get to see no more. Don't worry, we send it to your email. But when we send it to your email, do you pass it on? When it's on your Facebook, when you share it with anybody, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. they feel the whole city without the technological advancement that we have. And they're great. Amen. But said, man, am I showing my commitment? He said, they, they be in charge. Y'all have filled the roof. Y'all have filled the whole city. With this stuff, everywhere I go, the, the chief priest said, this, I can't go to the barber shop without hearing about this man named Jesus. I thought when we killed him, the movement was stopped. Aaron, wrong answer. He has some disciples. And guess what? Even in the midst of a difficult time like this that we're living in, even in the midst of the pandemic, God's word can still go forth. God's word still has power today. But see, God wants to use you and me as a conduit of blessing for other people. Don't you go to heaven by yourself. Take somebody with you. Expose them to the new life that you're looking to have hereafter. Y'all hearing this? Yes. Notice, notice, that, that, that's exactly what the scripture says. Then we strictly charge you not to speak anymore in his name. You intend to bring this man but upon us. But Peter said, and to the other apostles, we say, look, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, who you murdered by hanging him on the tree. Listen, these men had the ability to kill these guys. But remember, they prayed for boldness. It sure does sure enough sound like they being bold to me. You intend to bring this man upon us, and then they go on and say, we ought to obey God rather than men. And y'all, y'all did murder him. <laughs> Do you have that conviction today, friend? We serve the same God. Same church. Part of the same spiritual family. But sometimes our fervor is lacking. Mm. We think we're doing something. I came to service. <laughs> what are you doing outside of the service? All right. And sometimes you sleep in the service. <laughs> and sometimes it's worse of time, but sometimes you're not working. People say, I was sitting out of the mask. Your mask didn't even move. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Take it. No, no. Yes, it is. No, no. Uh. But Peter and all the apostles, he said, listen, Jesus is the one. Jesus is the man. Y'all couldn't do anything with him. And then Gamaliel came up. You remember Dr. Gamaliel, the law? He said, listen, give these guys some space. You remember there were some other prophets who came about, thought they were something. He said, well, over time, the movement dissipated. He said, but I am going to tell you this. If this thing is of God, you can't come to fight against God. Notice the Bible says at the end of the chapter, verse number 40, the Bible says, and they agreed with him, and when they had called the apostles and beat them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. That's right. They beat him. They flogged him. 
Notice, so they departed from the presence of the castle. This is the apostle. Notice, rejoicing that they were kind of worthy to suffer shame for his name. They said, man, this was a small, this was a small thing compared to what our Savior went through. I remember seeing the nail prints in his hand. I remember seeing the nail prints in his feet. I remember him saying, look, me seeing uh, the hand prints. And he said, hand, look me now. I, I, I remember, he said, man, this is a small thing before worthy cause. Y'all all right? And notice, this is what I want you to see, verse 42. And then, what's that to me? Every day. I mean, every day. Every day. Every day in the temple and in every house, they did not cease to teach and to preach Jesus the Christ. Y'all see that? Yep. Notice it when you go to chapter 6. Now in those days, when the number of disciples were multiplying, guess what? Because of their diligence, because of them being in the temple every single day and being in every house, teach, teach and not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. Notice what the Bible said in the beginning of chapter 6, verse number 1, and the gospel continued to spread. The church kept multiplying. Amen. Even in the midst of persecution, they didn't keep their mouths shut. Amen. Well, everybody did well. <laughs> notice, 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 he said. Now in those days when the number of disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews and the Hellenistic uh, and the Hellenists because their widows were being neglected during the daily administration. So the church had a food branch even then looking out for those widows at that particular time. But you had a group of the widows that were being neglected. So, man, it's a problem. Just like I told you, with any organization, you got people in it. Where there's people, there's problems, right? So we had problems that rose up. And that's chapter 6. So they go to the leaders of the church. They said, leaders, they, they apostles, hey, this thing going on. They come to find out. The hell is Jews? They being neglected. That ain't right. That ain't right. People are raising problems. Now, this is the issue. No one's trying to handle it. No one's trying to handle this thing. They said, listen, listen, listen. So the 12 were summoned and they multiplied the disciples. And it's not, he said, it's not desirable for us that we should lead the word of God. We continue to try to grow this kingdom, man. God has given us mandate. We can't leave this to handle this matter. You all look among yourselves. Y'all know that? Look among yourselves. Seek from among yourselves, verse number three, seven men of good report, full of the Holy Spirit, with wisdom, who we may appoint over this particular matter. He said, this particular matter can be handled by something else. He said, but we want to give ourselves to the ministry of the word. Amen. Amen. Notice, notice, notice. Notice what the Bible says. And, and look, this thing pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to find Stephen in chapter 7. And Philip and Procurus and Nathanar and Timon and Parmenas and, and Nicholas and the proselyte from uh, Antioch. Notice the Bible says in verse number 6. Whom they set before the apostles and whom they prayed and they laid their hands on him. This is your selection. You all know um, maybe more about them. <clears throat> Then, then we too, he said, listen, we're about ministry growing. He said, and the Bible said they laid their hand, they prayed, they laid their hands on him. Notice what the Bible says after this. After they set order in the church, watch what happens. Watch what happens. Notice what the Bible says in verse number seven. Then the word of God spread. And the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And great many priests were well, obedient to the faith. Some of the same ones who are opposing the gospel now became converts. Y'all see that? Let me tell you something. Pandemic or not, we got a mandate to teach the word of God. Sometimes you got to have conversations. I haven't said, sorry, Jesus, I kind of failed in this area. I haven't been doing all that I can do. Uh, help me to be better. Give me, give me the boldness. Then I pray for the saints boldness. That's what they did in the Bible. Lord, instead of me saying, Lord, I don't want to do that. People are going to persecute me. You know, they got cancel culture now. And then they put your name out there. And then they're going to blackball you. Then you be blacklisted. Then you would say, oh, Lord, give me boldness. Amen. That I may speak your word. Look, that's, the, that's the example that we got biblically already. And God always made provisions for his people. But he first needed them to operate by faith. Notice the only reason they were in prison because they were faithful to the mandate of God. When they got in prison, God used an angel to get them out. He said they go back and continue to work. Guess what? Even in the midst of the pandemic, you have to find new ways. I've been doing Bible studies via Zoom. 
Where some people, instead of being in front of a person with a mask on, one on one side of the table, one on one, another side. But, but we have to use the, the levels of convenience that we can to allow the gospel to still spread. He said, well, pain, you and I ain't got to do that. No, 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 no. Let's look at the book. As a church, in order for us to go upward, we have to have a godly mentality, a godly disposition. We got to go inward. We got to continue to look out and take care of each other. Amen. And I heard since so-and-so is going through. I, you have to have compassion putting yourself in another person's shoes. Just imagine how it would be dealing with that kind of loss. Amen. About so-and-so going, let me, let me put myself in their shoes and let me respond to them how I would want somebody to respond to me. That's what love does. Amen. Man, we love people, right? You don't have you have enough room. You need another service. You're gonna need another service. But we gotta get out of our own way. Let me tell you this: God's not the one holding us back. Yes, that's right. You ask God for boldness, He'll give it to you. You ask Him to place people in your path so that they can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. He'll do it for you. Yes. Not telling you what I heard, yes. telling you what I know. All right. Yes. You see, we got to learn to do, we got to focus on the mission, even in the midst of all the madness. Yes. Right. God has a mission and a plan for every single one of us. Yes. God's got a purpose for you being here today, yes. friend. Young people, doesn't matter how young you are, you, you know how to devise schemes of wickedness and do a wrong. God know your thoughts. Your computer and your parent come in the room. Dad, I'll take my phone out. God know, see, you, you don't, let me tell you something. He, he ran on the just, he ran on the unjust, but see, your ticket, because I'm young, they run out over time. Say it again. Say it again. Do you know they charge the young people as adults yeah. for certain crimes? Because yeah. they think about the ability of the intent and premeditation. Yeah. Yeah. The world is even on to that. Yeah, but the God, the all saying I who actually created you, knows your, knows your intent, yeah. knows your mentality. And guess what? He gives us opportunity week in and week out. Don't stop saying this message ain't for me. It's for you. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm a product of the church looking out for the church. Grandma brought me to church. Father really went, went in my life. But my, my father figure actually became a preacher when he was a preacher at the church. He looked out and the saints looked out. Boy, go home. What you doing on this phone? Go home before I tell you, Grandma. Okay. <laughs> well, they say, I'm going to call time. That's my mother. That, that's all I needed to hear. See you later. <laughs> Don't call time, please. Don't call time. Don't call time. But but there, there's some realities. See, God is continuing to throw out the light mind, but you keep saying, no, 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 no. God bless you with this. God bless you with that. Bless you with the grace. Uh, Lord, bless me on this test that I ain't studied for, Lord. <laughs> Y'all did that too? Lord, 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 bless me to, to score 30 points in this basketball game, Lord. I know I ain't done up for you now, but, but Lord, please. Yeah. 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 Adults do the same way. Yeah. Bless me, Lord. Bless my kid. Help me get into college. Lord, help us with this financial aid, Lord. Please. I'll be tearing and fat. I'm going to start fasting. <laughs> we, we, but, but, but when it comes back, you say, well, man, how active am I for him? That's right. I'm asking God to do an awful lot. Keep me breathing, keep my household breathing, keep my cousins them in North Carolina breathing, keep this. We, Lord, we want the Lord to do everything. Lord, help them send this stimulus, Lord. <laughs> you know I heard the prayer. They said, we all prayed in unison on that. <laughs> but I, I need him to do a lot. But the question, what am I willing to do in return? That's right. Uh, oh, am I actually going to be like the little brat? You just see the people with the brat children and they, they, the time you don't want to come over your house? No, you, you can come, but leave him home. Because I heard what he did. On. But see, unthankful, ungrateful. 
Mind, you see them throw a temper tantrum in the store, cuss the parent out, do all this other kind of stuff. It, and sometimes you're not careful. We can be like brat children to God. We got this long laundry list for the Lord. I ain't doing that. I ain't turning the camera. I ain't coming to that class. I ain't doing that. You got all these gifts and you're not even contributing enough to the kingdom. Why? Because you're selfish right now. Don't send me an email. It's already out there. All, all I'm doing is telling you at the same conversation I had to have with myself. Well, we see how active the early church was. Why does it fail in comparison? Only thing, only difference is the level of commitment. And guess who's able to control that? You and me. I stop blaming the preacher. Well, he ain't preach on that, and I ain't. It's not the Lord, though. He knows all the stuff you do in your quiet time, but it's not looking on your Bible like that's. Okay. <laughs> you don't know Jesus. You're not a part of the family of God, friend. God's calling you today to obey Him. Be some, be some dangerous time. We all get this vaccine. People get vaccine. They don't know what. What's in it? They don't, you know, it's trying to live. There's so much uncertainty. And you need to stop playing Russian roulette with yourself. Grow up. Tim Tisha, in order, in order to be right with God, you got to give up, you got to grow up in order to go up. So, I believe I got some country relative that I, 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 that. Make plan, plan. Give up, grow up, to go up. When you look at it, what you giving up? What are you willing to get? What's on the top of the block? How are you growing from this time last year? You got the same hands. See, if there's no growth, it's not pointing the fingers. It's looking at that person right there. That's on you. See, when you begin to take accountability for where you are, that's when you actually grow. It's on me. I'm going to do something different. The definition of insanity, friends, continue to do the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. And you know Webster would say, that's insane. <laughs> you don't know Jesus, the part of you. He said, hear the gospel. Believe the same. Be willing to repent of your sins. Making a change of mind, but it leads to a change of action. That doesn't mean everything in your life is going to be perfect. You're not going to make all the right decisions. you got to grow in that. Be willing to confess Jesus Christ. You don't have to come up here and confess all your sins and say, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Same confession that the eunuch made in Acts chapter 8. And today, be willing to be baptized in one, just like they did in the book of Acts. Why did they preach baptism? Because that's exactly what Jesus commanded them to do. Matthew 28, Mark chapter 16, Luke chapter 24. And Acts 2, 38, Peter said, repent and be back every one of y'all. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why am I going to do that? So your sins can be forgiven. Okay. You can't believe your sins away. Okay. They got to be washed. Acts 22, 16. <clears throat> Paul was so to rise, be baptized, washing away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. We're about to stand and say the Savior's invitation. We're going to ask you to walk up. We'll take your confession. We'll baptize you today. There's some folk in this audience today that need to get their business right with God. He's granted you another opportunity. There's young people dying every day. There's older folk dying every day. You are not exempt. You remember the body of Jesus Christ? You need to, if it's something, something will say, you know what, I need to do better. It's just church to pray for you. Church, pray for my bones. Pray for my commitment. Let us know uh, what that issue is. If they want to leave all your issues, just pray for generalities. <laughs> we need to know. Don't put it all out there. But we give you an opportunity if you need prayer, your family needs prayer, you let us know about it. We're about to stand and say your Savior's Invitation. Come on and be saved today. Why don't you come? Oh, to Jesus, I surrender. Every time I wake up in the morning.